Yeah, coach, looks like you're back at the facility. When were you able to officially rejoin the team and, and what were the last several days like for you? Uh, you know, I was able last night about uh, 820 is when, uh, you know, the results got back and, um, you know, I'm happy to, to be back and rejoining the team and um, have practice today and, and then obviously jump on a plane and get ready to, to go play Auburn. Curtis? Hey, Coach, welcome back. Uh, wondering if you could just kind of give us your impressions on Auburn, a lot of new faces on the team this year, and, and maybe some things you guys have been emphasizing in preparation for them. Yeah, they're an excellent uh, – first of all, they're really well coached. They play really hard, Curtis. They, um, you know, they're a very good offensive rebounding team. They're really, really active uh, on the glass. They're a great loose ball getting team. Um, you know, obviously Powell and Flanagan have been two guys who have been in focal points for them offensively. Um, we just, we got to rebound. We got to take care of the basketball, which is kind of two themes that we'll talk about all year. Now that we're in conference play, um, we got to play hard. Um, I know that sounds simple and easy, but, um, when you're playing against a hard, hard group of playing guys, um, we know how good they are in their own building. I know it's a different year, but there's still comfort in your own building. And, um, you know, they don't lose many games uh, at home. So uh, obviously tough challenge. It's, you know, there's so much stuff going into tomorrow night's game. First time us traveling, first time playing a power five. I mean, there's just a lot of things uh, that go into this game. Um, Andrew, did I get everything you wanted to? Uh, I, I I just asked how the last several days were. I mean, that, that that's fine. Yeah, last several days sucked. I hated being away from the team. Scotty? That's why I didn't answer that. I was trying to keep a good face, happiness. Hey, Coach, just heading into tomorrow, what do you feel confident that this group does well and what might keep you up at night and why? everything's keeping me up at night, Scotty, just because, I mean, we're just, I mean, nobody's gone into an SEC building really other than, you know, our coaches and, and Desi and, and Ethan, you know, and so um, everything in SEC play is going to take on a life of its own. I mean, you know, every game is close. Um, you know, I mentioned to someone the other day that, you know, just, I mean, I remember, you know, being a freshman at the University of San Diego, and that was in whatever, 1980, well, I don't know, 1983, and our coach talked about conference play and how hard it was going to be and how every game is close. I mean, it's everybody's having these same discussions with their team to try to get everybody to understand the importance of every possession. Because um, really, Scotty, that's what – time frame we're in right now. Every possession is going to matter. Um, you know, I talked to the team about let's not have any empty minutes, you know, like we can't have a guy that uh, that's out there for two or three minutes. That's, that's, that's either tired or needs a blow. Like we can't have any empty minutes whatsoever. Um, you know, cause we're, I mean, we're a team that probably has very little, you know, margin or room for air. Bob. Eric, I'm, I'm sure you're optimistic about your tests and everything. We just how, how, what was your reaction when you got the news that it was official? Because this COVID test can be kind, kind of nuts sometimes, I imagine. And just, just how excited are you after missing the last game to know, hey, I'm going to be with my team. I'm going to be on the bench. I'm not going to have to sit here and watch, watch it from home. Yeah, I would say, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, really, really happy. You got a new breath of fresh air, um, you know, but also a lot of frustration. I mean, I, you know, I, I felt great. I, you know, I mean, I worked out in my garage like three, four times a day. I had nothing to do. Um, I felt great. I went and did tests, COVID tests that I was not asked to do. Um, I jumped in with football uh, one, just cause I just, number one, I wanted to, you know, make sure that my wife and daughter, um, you know, they're fine. Um, you know, and so I, I went tested way more than I needed to, but, but I also kind of, you know, wanted to, you know, Hey, I'm fine. Like I feel good. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm still one of the few, 
you know, in our group that hasn't had it. And, and I do think that, you know, wearing a mask, um, it has certainly helped me for sure. Um, you know, cause, cause obviously if, so, if somebody deems you to be contact traced and you're pulled out, there's a, there's a good chance. And that's happened to me twice now, um, you know, close contact and, and, um, and I haven't gotten it knock on wood. Um, doesn't mean it, it can't happen today, tomorrow, the next day, next month. But, but, you know, I certainly, you know, feel like the stuff that we've tried to do here is, has certainly helped me from a personal standpoint, not get COVID. How, how, how ready do you feel the team is for SEC play? I guess you don't really have any choice, but just, you feel like, Hey, this team's, this team's ready to start conference play. Bob, I have not been around them. You, Nikki, Andrew, Scotty, Curtis, Russell, Hayden, all you guys probably got the same feel I do. You guys have seen them as much as I have the last week. So I don't know. I'll find out today. At least I get to see him today. Maybe I'll have a better feel than you guys after shoot around today. Cause I mean, the truth of it is you guys probably saw him live earlier than I have. You, anybody that saw our last game live has a better feel than I do. Yeah, I, I think you probably have a better feel, but I got I got a couple more. I'll I'll turn it back to Mike. <laughs> Nikki. Yeah, coach, you guys are you know eight and zero. Everyone's playing pretty well, but you know as you head into the SEC portion of the schedule, are there any like you know call to actions you have to any specific guys that you you know you need a little bit more or anything like that? I, I think, uh, Nikki, really everybody has to step up. We have to coach better. Uh, we got to be ready for late game situations. Um, we've got to add the press spray. Like there's a lot from a coaching standpoint, we got to keep getting better at. And that's why, you know, you want your team to improve as, as the season progresses. But from an individual player standpoint, they all need to step up in some type of category. Um, for instance, you know, Jalen Tate's got to take great care of the basketball now that we're in SEC play. Justin Smith has the ability to be a dominant rebounder on both ends, not just on the offensive end. So we need Justin now that we're in SEC play against longer, better athletes than we've seen. We need him to do a better job or be more effective on the defensive backboards. Um, so I think, you know, I could go down each guy. Uh, some of our shooters can improve their three-point shooting and be more consistent uh, from a shooting standpoint. So uh, we've given all of our guys little notes on, um, you know, their CUME stats thus far, um, highlighted them with, with, with detail on areas that they can improve and, and get better at and areas that the team needs them to do. Um, so, yeah, I think that really, Nikki, a lot of – we need everybody to just get a little bit better than maybe what we've been – uh, through non-conference play. Coach. Coach, did you say you've been contact traced before? When, when was the first time you were, got contact traced? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. It was when it was when we went on a little bit of a pause, you know, September or whatever it was. Gotcha. And then <clears throat> at Abilene, in the Abilene Christian game, I don't think I saw Coach Mosier or Coach Ruta there either. You know, if they're going to be able to travel and, and also who has stepped into those roles for y'all while they've been out. Yeah. Um, um, so, Andrew, I mean, I went through all that last night on the radio show. I'm going to have to get you a link to it. Um, but so Coach Ruda had stepped into Coach. Coach Moser's been out, um, I think, two games now. He will not be going with us to uh, Auburn. Coach Ruda was in the same situation as me uh, because he went to lunch. Um, you know, he did not have it, um, but he's back with us. He'll go on the road. Coach Ruda will step into uh, Coach Mosier's role um, on the staff. And, and um, you know, we have, you know, Michael Musselman will move into um, to Ruda's spots, so to speak, and everybody's doing something different. I mean, our itinerary, um, you know, different people are, are, are doing that. Um, you know, we have a plane seating chart, which I've never done before. We have a bus seating chart that I've never done before. We have a seating chart for how we'll sit uh, at a team meal. Um, all stuff that'll be new to us, you know, starting today when we finish practice. And then the last thing I got too is, uh, you know, the last time y'all had an eight day break, y'all came out kind of a slow start against ORU. Do you have any concern about that this time? Do you think that was kind of a learning uh, experience that y'all learned from? Yeah, I mean, I think like, um, 
you know, if you just kind of read around the holidays, some teams, you know, have a little lull right before Christmas. Some have it a little bit after. Um, Hutch, I haven't been at practice, you know what I mean? And so I won't really know, you know, I mean, I hope that we have a good practice today and I hope that we're ready. Um, but anytime, you know, you're dealing with student athletes and, and, and there's an eight day break, there's, you know, if you come out great, everybody will say that, you know, it didn't affect you. And if you come out slow, that they blame it on that. To me, it's, Hey, we, we've had, you know, three days off or four day, whatever they got off for Christmas. Um, then they came back, had a couple, you know, three or four practices, whatever it's been. And now we get, we, we got to go play and no, there's no excuses either way. I mean, we're not the only team that had an eight day break. Hey, Hey coach, uh, this may, you probably may have a better idea of this after practice today, since you haven't been around them, but we got to cover all the freshmen and all these guys like playing again and more in high school. And of course, uh, Moses and all the guys that you have, um, do you get the sense that they're even more, maybe a little more hyped up to face guys that they played in high school and an AAU ball, uh, especially now that the kind of that opening SEC game? Uh, you know, I don't really know, Hayden, because I, you know, I haven't had that conversation. I mean, I could, I could speculate, you know, that any time you play against somebody that you have competed against or grew up with or played AAU ball with or played against, um, you know, that there can be a heightened excitement about it, so to speak. But, um, you know, it would be, you know, I haven't talked to them. I'm, I'm only speculating that when you know people, um, you know, your competitive juices can, can, can get a little bit more heightened or whatever. How about yourself? Just the anticipation of, I, I know you hated missing that ball game, but uh, the fact that you're back out there, I know it's just one game, but at the same time, I know you're chomping at the bit to be back on the floor. Yeah. I mean, I, um, my wife told me to control my emotions um, to the best of my ability after, you know, I'm ready to coach. That's all. I mean, I just want to get back with our guys. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thanks, Hayden. Um, yeah, Eric, um, the, a, Alan Flanagan, you know, his dad's, uh, you know, Wes there on the Auburn staff, but Alan's averaging almost 14 points, about 29 minutes. What, 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 what's your take on him? Yeah, I think he's really improved. I thought last year he was a really good piece Um and, you know, last year I thought he was a, a really complimented a lot of their guys because he's uh, kind of at least last year was like, a, you know, he, he did a little bit of everything. Um, you know, he defended at a high level for him. He could score it at times. He was a transition scorer as well. Um, you know, he's, he's improved um, a lot offensively. Or maybe he's just gotten more of an opportunity than he did uh, last year, you know, he's, he's gotten more opportunity. He's playing with more freedom, more freedom comes with opportunity and roles change from year to year. Um, you know, he was patient last year cause he had some really good games. And then there was some nights where he didn't play a lot of minutes and that's what happens. I mean, you see growth in a player who has patience and, um, believed in coach Pearl and, and his system. And, and, um, you know, he's reaping the benefits of being, you know, almost every night they're leading score or second leading score. So, um, you know, I love it when you see a, a player have patience and, and um, you know, stick with his, his program and believe in his coaching staff and believe in his teammates. And um, he's off to a great start without a doubt. And then I think you guys are averaging 10 threes a game made and Auburn's averaging like nine, six. You guys are one, two in the league. I know three balls always big. But do you see that being a, a really big factor in this game? Yeah, I think it is. I mean, I, you know, they have some players that that can really get streaky and hot from three. A guy like Cambridge, uh, who I think is a great cutter, um, but he's also a guy that can 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 really get in fuego from three if you let him. And and Flanagan can knock down, you know, two or three or four threes in a game if you don't guard him properly and. Certainly Powell is a guy that can make threes and number one is a great shooter that you can't give up airspace to. I think what makes Auburn challenging is they also, a lot of those guys are really good with the ball in their hands off the bounce. So um, a, a guy like Flanagan, you can't just play him for the three ball because he's really good, you know, beating people off the dribble and drawing fouls and, 
Um, so you've got to you've got to take away the three, but also understand you got to you got to guard off the bounce as well, which sometimes just strictly a three point shooter is a little bit easier to guard uh, than a guy that can score it in several different ways. And tell about your wife. She was telling you to be calm, like on the bench at the game or what? what no, she just, she just knows that I have 40 minutes that got like put in storage and, oh. she doesn't, you know, she doesn't want me to you know, to try to use 80 minutes worth of energy because I missed the last game in the next 40 minutes. Yeah, that, that, I mean, your, your, your head might explode or something, you know? We don't want you to hurt yourself, <laughs> cause a fire or something. <laughs> okay, okay, thanks. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate your time.